Let's get the thoughts now of Gregory Copley, Editor-in-Chief of the Defence and Foreign Affairs Journal, joining us live here on RT International. Good to see you today, Gregory. Thanks for coming on. Let's get straight into it here. In his address following Vladimir Putin's speech, Barack Obama certainly had some strong words for the Russian president. Let's have a quick listen right now. If he continues down the path that he is on, violating international law, providing heavy arms to uh, the separatists in Ukraine, violating an agreement that he agreed to just uh, a few weeks ago, uh, the Minsk agreement, the isolation that Russia is currently experiencing will continue. It is not our preference to see Russia isolated the way it is. Uh, we would prefer a Russia that is fully integrated with the global economy, that is uh, thriving on behalf of its people, uh, that can once again engage with us in cooperative efforts uh, around global challenges. Gregory, how do you uh, read between the lines of what the American president had to say there? Well, this is the American president who, who goes abroad after losing a, a huge election in the United States to, uh, to sound tough and statesmanlike and to take a high moral tone. Uh, I think uh, where the Russian government may have fallen short is in explaining the context of what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, the reality is that we've, we've seen years of build up to this point. We've seen years of uh, US and European Union intervention in Ukraine. Uh, we see uh, the US now authorizing and supporting militia groups from the Western Ukraine uh, going into the eastern Ukraine. So we're seeing a lot of things which the West has been doing to provoke this crisis, uh, but that's never explained in the Western media. Uh, the realities, the full context has not been explained, and Russia has been remiss in not actually putting out its case effectively, I think, in this regard. However, having said that, I think President Putin came out really well from the G20 summit. Uh, he perhaps took a lot of flack from the media but in fact got a lot of support uh, from the rank and file Australians who see his approach as being determined, tough and uh, not caving in uh, to, to a lot of pressure. So the reality is that what President Obama said at the summit merely reinforced certain Western positions and unfortunately reinforced EU and Australian positions as well. Uh, and neither side has really given themselves the space to back down, reassess this and get relations back on a, on a level playing field. Gregory, Putin was saying, Putin was saying there at the, the G20, West. I do apologize for jumping in, but Putin said he believed that global no, volatility no. would end if there was, quote, a mutual respect of different interests. So what does that mean, a mutual respect of different interests? Well, I think backing off and, and allowing both sides to recognize that there are spheres of influence which need to be uh, stabilized around Russia and, and around the European Union. Uh, the European Union, uh, for, for its part, really depends a lot on Russia, would love to have strong and good relations with Russia, economic as well as political. So the opportunity exists, but you have to move back from the rhetoric, and that, that does, in fact, get back to respect. Putin, who's been, uh, sorry, um, Obama, who's been isolated politically increasingly over the last couple of years and, and now with the big election, has tried to salvage his political position by looking and sounding tough against Russia, but without any plans or substance to back that up. And that, I think, has been very, very damaging to uh, Eurasian uh, stability. Now, Gregory, Obama again called Russia at this uh, G20 summit one of the top three threats to global security. But at last year's G20 summit, uh, Syria's president was a top threat to global security. He was the number one bogeyman. What does that tell us about the state of geopolitics? Well, it tells us that uh, you get politicians uh, reacting uh, and making statements without really due consideration. What we did see, of course, was uh, President Obama had a strong agenda, and he'd had it for, uh, well, ever since he's been in office, to remove uh, President Hafez, uh, Bashir al-Assad uh, and has worked with the Turkish and Qatar governments in particular, and to a degree the Saudi government, to, uh, to get to remove Assad. Uh, so Assad became public enemy number one, regardless of, of the value of that uh, strategic move for U.S. interests, uh, but it was more about Obama's personal predilection with President Erdogan uh, of, of Turkey and uh, the Emir of Qatar.
Now, uh, Vladimir Putin and, and Obama, they didn't have any one-on-one -on -one chat during this G20 in Brisbane. Uh, the Russian president did, however, hold talks with his European colleagues. Uh, the French president even saying, Francois Hollande, mm. that he would like to help to resolve the crisis in Ukraine. But Obama, again, talking more sanctions. I mean, are we seeing a bit of a split of opinion between America and its uh, so-called allies? Well, there's no question about that. I mean, the, the Atlantic has become the great divide between North America and, and, uh, and Europe. Uh, the, the, the U.S. Pacific pivot or the tilt to, to the Pacific was not so much a move to the Pacific by the United States. It was a move away from the Atlantic and from Europe. So what we're seeing now is the U.S. essentially ignoring uh, NATO and, and Europe uh, and focusing on China, which is, which is understandable. Uh, largely for economic reasons as, as much as anything, but yet still trying to keep its control over NATO. And the United States does have some loyal allies uh, for cultural and trade reasons and historical reasons uh, who have stuck with the United States through this process and it's damaged the relationship, between, for example, between Britain and the European Union, between Canada and Europe, between Australia and Europe, uh, as, as Australia, Canada, Britain sort of have really stuck by the US. Not that they shouldn't, but the rea they should be also looking at the reality of, of how to stabilize the Eurasian continent uh, for, their, for everyone's benefit. It's a conversation I'd love to take further. Uh, Gregory Copley, the editor-in-chief of the Defence and Foreign Affairs Journal, a great pleasure indeed having you live with us on RT International today. Thank you very much.